Praise the Lord. Good to see everybody here tonight. Everybody that is here, I'm sure there will be more that will be coming in very shortly. We uh, need to pray as we kick off this evening. And, uh, of course, let's remember Brother Beardsley, who is now in recovery mode after the uh, gallbladder surgery. Uh, Scott Lucas is in the hospital. Um, we've got two Ahmed Poors in the hospital and a third one visiting. Uh, in case you've not heard, Meg had her baby yesterday, little girl, they're naming Juliet and going to call her Jewel. And uh, many of you know Sister Sandy Davis, and her mother passed away just real recently. And the funeral will be, what, 3 o'clock Sunday afternoon? In Millington. Okay. So uh, let's pray for that family, for these other health situations. And... Uh, I wonder if you have needs tonight that you'd like to for the church to pray with you about. Mark Davis. New job, okay. Praise the Lord. Unsaved loved ones, and maybe in there somewhere a few unloved saved ones, so let's pray for whatever the situation may be. Could we go before him tonight? Dear Jesus, Savior, we thank you for your hand upon your people. God, for the way that you have provided for us, your uh, watch care, your protection and provision. Lord, you see these who are ill, who are recovering, oh God, who are fighting a a problem right now. I pray that your spirit would move, bless them. God, you're the healer of all our diseases, and we call upon you, O oh Lord, to touch. Help Sister Davis's family, O oh God, as they face this time of, of bereavement. Keep your hand upon your people and direct their steps. Help with uh, Martavis's job, O oh Lord. And, uh, there are other needs in this congregation, and, and loved ones, O oh Lord, that are away from the ark of safety. I pray that your spirit would move upon them, draw them, and let them help them to respond to that drawing, O oh God. Be with us, we pray. Help us to walk with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> well, let's see. Friday night is the community meeting over in Bridgeton. Uh, be meeting here at the church and you can, I'm sure, couldn't all get in one car probably, but you can follow uh, as they'll be going over there. And if there's anyone who's going who has, who is going to have room to take somebody passenger with you, could you please let us know? We've I've heard that there are some who are needing a ride. So if you could uh, let us know, we'd appreciate that and see what we can uh, maybe arrange, uh, at least partially. Uh, so if you uh, can remember that. I have uh, folks coming in from out of state. So I'm unfortunately not going to get to go. It's not unfortunate that they're coming in, but it's just unfortunate that the the timing is such that I'll not be able to to go uh, be with you. But I'm I'm sure it'll be a, a grand time. It always is when this community gets together. Praise the Lord. Martavis, how about the two of you coming and taking our offering for us tonight, please? Yeah. Receive it for us. From us, for us, however. Praise the Lord. 
Praise God. And let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for your benefits, your blessings, your provision for us. We thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to give. Pray that you'd bless those that give, those that have not to give. Use it for your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. And because of a lot of different circumstances uh, that have converged tonight, uh, we've had to cancel our two uh, discipleship classes for this evening. And so I'm sure that they'll probably be taken care of next week and that will finish it up. Uh, just things just didn't work out uh, where that we could have staff to take care of all of that this evening. So we appreciate you being here. Uh, we've got uh, young people visiting with us in the, this session tonight. Glad to have them. And uh, I'll be trying to take care of this. <clears throat> this kind of came in a in a hurry not exactly last minute but uh, I was planning on being involved in something else this evening thank you fellas and uh, <clears throat> so you're you're caught with me again and uh, I've thought and, and said that it would be easier and it would be nice if sometime I could just pull out old number 47 or 53 or 22 or whatever from the files and I really don't have them numbered but that's just a way of expressing it and just re-give you something that I've, I had come up with and used sometime in my years back in Oklahoma It'd be nice if I could do that and feel good about it. And maybe there will be times when I can. But so far, it's just been, I need something new. I need something fresh. I need something that uh, uh, is, is different than uh, something I have done. And of course, it's not bad to go over the same thing. I like bacon and eggs repeatedly. And for the first 18 months that I was in Bartlesville before Sister Moss and I married, my standard was uh, I would get uh, two ham sandwiches of a morning. One of them would be breakfast, one of them would be lunch on the job, and then uh, on the weekends and for all, all the time for supper, uh, it would be a Mr. Swiss hamburger. Uh, in 18 months and uh, I didn't get tired of them but I don't think you want 18 months <laughs> or maybe even three weeks of uh, the same thing so I'm going to come uh, this evening with a, a study uh, from the word of the Lord and again from a dictionary and I have a, a different type of title, as, as quite often my titles turn out to be. But my title this evening is Don't Be Ignorant About Ignorance. Okay? Don't be ignorant about ignorance. There was a, a preacher that I knew. I was not closely associated with him, but uh, we did sit on a, a few committee together and uh, one of the he was uh, <clears throat> a little bit rough around the edges and just pretty close to the center too uh, in fact he used to tell the story about how uh, that because of the way he had acted and the things he had done uh, that they kicked him off of the campgrounds in Oklahoma and told him not to come back. And uh, he, and I was not involved in it. It was before I got there. 
but uh, knowing him, they were probably well justified in what they had done. But he used to greet his friends with the appellation when he'd meet them, Hello, ignorant. And that was his standard greeting. Hello, ignorant. Well, <clears throat> I like more along the lines of, of what the uh, cowboy philosopher from Claremore, Oklahoma said, a man by the name of Will Rogers. You may have heard of him. But his saying from uh, a syndicated column, it was number 90, that was uh, published in the New York Times in August of 1924. He said, you know, everybody is ignorant, only on different subjects. Now, if I could just take a moment here, I'm not talking tonight about stupid. There's a fellow on KMOX radio station in St. Louis that his standard line is you can't fix stupid. But you can fix ignorance. And so we're talking tonight, and I'll, I'll bring this back into the Bible here in just a little bit, but uh, we're talking about ignorant. We're all ignorant. Some of us are ignorant in one area. Others are different in other areas. I'm going to go to the dictionary here and we will begin to uh, see some illustrations that they use. And I think it will be uh, become very clear, very plain, that there are different kinds of ignorance. And I must plead guilty, I am ignorant in lots of areas. But ignorance is an adjective, and its first definition is lacking in knowledge or training unlearned. Uh, the illustration there is an ignorant man. Then the second definition is lacking in knowledge or information as to a particular subject or fact. And the illustration that they use there is someone who is ignorant of quantum physics. Guilty! <laughs> the illustration that I have used in time gone by is that uh, I am also ignorant of nuclear thermodynamics. I just, uh, I've just got a, a blank in my field of knowledge uh, along that, uh, uh, that area and that specialty. Uh, Definition number three is that it is someone who is uninformed or unaware. Like they are ignorant that their little brother's sneaking up behind them to scare them. And uh, they'll soon get over that ignorance because they'll, uh, they'll become very knowledgeable of it. The, fifth, the fourth definition is due to or showing lack of knowledge or training such as someone who makes an ignorant statement. There's some synonyms that might help us have a, a better idea of what it's talking about is that it is uninstructed, untutored, or untaught. Uh, also, it can be un, unlettered, illiterate, or uneducated, lacking in knowledge or training, Ignorant may mean knowing little or nothing, or it may mean being uninformed about a particular subject. Uh, illustrations there are an ignorant person can be dangerous, or I confess I'm ignorant about mathematics. And I think we could all say that at some level of mathematics. Now, uh, I've, I've got a, a scripture here from the 13th chapter, or pardon me, the first chapter and the 13th verse. You might not even want to look this one up because the, I'm going to talk about how it got misused. Uh, but there was a, a woman who uh, had several suitors and uh, the, they were all wondering uh, why that she would consent to marry none of them. 
and uh, they asked her and, and finally got together, all of them together, I guess. Might not be the wisest way to handle it, but they got together and asked her why she wouldn't marry any of them. And so she quoted, kind of misquoted, uh, Romans 1 and 13, Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren. <laughs> and just left it right there. It's out quoting the rest of the, of the scripture. Uh, <clears throat> but I, I want to look at some scriptures in the Bible uh, that deal with the matter of ignorance. You know, there are, there are some things that one of our illustrations there was that an ignorant person can be dangerous, but there are certain types of ignorance that are dangerous to the ignorant, to someone who doesn't know what's going on. I, I remember seeing a, a training film. It was taken from a dash cam on a police cruiser, and they were teaching the, the officers that I was taking the training with uh, about being careful around various situations. And it showed a, and this was actual occurrence, that there was a, a truck that had, had a wreck and uh, the, a police officer rolled up on the scene, had his dash cam on, and he ran to help the driver. And in doing so, he ran through a cloud of, of gas that was escaping from the, the back of the truck. And then he got the driver and pulled him back through that cloud of gas. And the thing was that he was ignorant of the fact that that gas was poisonous and the last part of that dash cam footage that they showed, the sound was of the officer coughing as he died. Just, just running through that cloud of gas, just a short time. It was so poisonous that it killed him. So uh, what you don't know can hurt you. And that is especially so in matters of dealing with God. You may remember uh, when David was first bringing the ark, trying to get it to Jerusalem, and the oxen stumbled, and Uzzah stretched out his hand to touch the ark, uh, to steady it. And when he touched it, immediately dropped dead. He, he didn't know that it, that would happen. But just because he didn't know, didn't spare his life. Uh, Leviticus 4 and 2, and then verse, I'll go to also verse number 4. Uh, Leviticus 4, and beginning with verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a soul shall sin through ignorance... Against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done and shall do against any of them. And then it gives a little more definition of that. And then verse 4 says, And he shall bring the bullock unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord and shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head and kill the bullock before the Lord. Now, if you run through the Pentateuch, uh, the, where the law was given and then explanations about the law, you will find that there are, is much written about people who would break the law, who would do something wrong in ignorance. Well, even in our system of jurisprudence, ignorance of the law is not an excuse. I didn't know that the speed limit was 35 officer. Yeah, but you're getting a ticket anyhow. Uh, just the ignorance doesn't do it. But what I would like to point out is that, that it was listed several times, multiple times, there in the books of the law, and that it was 
an expensive thing. Ignorance is expensive. The bullock was the most expensive offering that any individual could make. In fact, on the Day of Atonement, when they brought a bullock to offer uh, at the temple or the tabernacle, generally that bullock was offered for the entire nation. So when an individual offers a bullock, that is an expensive situation. So we find that, that uh, ignorance can be expensive. It could not only be expensive in the days of the law, but ignorance of the ways of God, the ignorance of, of what God really wants us to do, can wind up to be eternally expensive if we're not careful. Now, the beautiful thing about it is, is in, November, in Numbers chapter 15 and uh, verses 28 and 29, we read something here that says, it's, he's talking also about ignorance. And the priest shall make an atonement for the soul that sinneth ignorantly. So the priest is commanded, if someone sins ignorantly, you cannot say, I'm not going to get you out of this. I'm not going to make an atonement. The priest shall make an atonement for the soul that sinneth ignorantly. When he sinneth by ignorance before the Lord to make an atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven him. Ye shall have one law for him that sinneth through ignorance, both for him that is born among the children of Israel, and this is the beautiful thing, for the stranger that sojourneth among them. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Our, our great high priest, Jesus, made an atonement, not just for the sons and daughters of Abraham. He made an atonement for the entire world. Everyone, whosoever will. And the thing is that that atonement covers so many of the sins that we have committed so much of the time when we didn't even know we were crossing God's law, when we had no idea that we were doing things that were wrong. Now, in Acts chapter 3, and beginning with verse 15, uh, Simon Peter is here uh, talking. They have uh, seen the, the lame man at the temple healed. They've been brought before the Sanhedrin, before the council, and uh, Simon Peter is having to uh, defend what they have done, and in his, in his speaking, he tells them, and verse 15, and you killed the prince of life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses, and his name through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Okay, so he says, you killed the Lord of glory. God raised him up, and because of that, this man who was weak, who was crippled, who was a beggar, is now solid, he's strong, he's, he's healed, he's standing here before you. And now, brethren, verse 17, I want or I understand that through ignorance you did it, as did also your rulers. They crucified Jesus, not realizing they were crucifying their Messiah, not understanding that he was God manifest in the flesh. They did it through ignorance, but I want to point out that something that is done through ignorance is still done. How many times have we either said or thought, I didn't know that would happen? I didn't know that would be the result of my actions. 
But the thing is that even if we do something in ignorance, it's still done. I remember I was working on a rent house one time, and uh, I've still got the screwdriver somewhere. And I was trying to fix uh, some electrical work, an electrical uh, plug-in, and and swapping it out and, and uh, working it hot. And uh, somewhere along in there, I got the tip of the screwdriver and just a little bit up on the blade of the screwdriver, both into the wires and pew. So I kept the screwdriver. It's not good for anything anymore because it burned it off at the tip. I didn't know I was close to the wire. But that didn't give me a freebie. <laughs> and the thing about it is that we're talking about life, and in life there is very seldom overs what we do, we do. If we did it through ignorance, it's still done. We've said things through ignorance. We've done things through ignorance that hurt someone. And we didn't intend to. We didn't know it would. But it was still done. Now, Acts 17 and 29. And, and I, I really like this one. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is likened to gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. Uh, I, I never have really figured out the thought process behind idols. I, I remember uh, one time when I was in, well, I saw it more than once, but I was in India teaching in the Bible school over there, and, and between... Uh, where I, I was staying, the hotel where I was staying in the, and the Bible school, as I walked back and forth, there was a, a place there where they held their uh, weddings. And I would go by and they'd be getting ready for the wedding. And then later after class, well, I'd go by and they were breaking down from, from having had the wedding. And in, in both directions, I would see them with a the truck backed up there, and, and there would be men that would be getting their gods out of the truck. Or after it was over, they would take their gods and their idols and put them back in the truck to haul them away. I'm glad I've got a God that can carry me instead of me having to carry it. Praise God. But he, he said that uh, there are folks that know, uh, that think that... Uh, the Godhead is like gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. Verse 30, and the times of this ignorance, God winked at. But now, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Praise God. I am so, God, so glad that my God realizes I've done, you've done, some pretty ignorant things. But now, he commands us to repent, to worship him, and walk with him. Praise God. And uh, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17... The Apostle Paul said this, I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Verse 18, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. So many times we think of blindness as, as of the eyes. But Paul says folks can be blind in their heart 
and, and not see those things that are un, imperceivable by the eye. I, I, I have never seen the Lord, but I have perceived him by him moving in me. And so Paul says, you've got to, you've got to get beyond this ignorance because it causes a lifestyle. It causes you to live in such a way that is really not acceptable before him. 1 Peter 1 and 13, dealing with the same type of thing, the same area is that, uh, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. I look around and, and I've had decades now to watch society as it shifts and changes and does this and does that and, and the, the way that people think and, and sometimes I just have to shake my head. Uh, isn't that ignorant? Uh, the way fashion goes. Uh, any of you ever look at old pictures? You did that with your hair? I mean, when you had hair. Why would I ever wear something like that? Well, it was what was uh, the fashion. It was available. We were fashioning ourselves according to our former lusts in our ignorance. But as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, in all of your ways, your behaviors. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy but that does not describe this present world that swirls around us and has no north star of righteousness to guide it on its journey. You know, if you look at, at the way society goes, it's almost like they were steering their ship by following fireflies. President Lyndon Johnson used to run around with his coat pocket stuffed with polls, opinion polls. I tell you what an opinion poll can do. It can tell you what people are thinking, but it cannot tell you whether they're right. And the thing is, they keep taking opinion polls every week because people's opinions keep changing. Do you remember the time when President George H.W. Bush, the first Bush president, had a, it was up in the 90s for percentile approval rating. And he lost the next election. I don't know that he changed all that much, but opinion changed that much. And I'm not talking for or against uh, that President Bush. I'm just saying that people change their minds and they, they have, if they don't have a solid core of belief and understanding, then it's not just in politics that they can be wavering and wishy-washy. So our ignorance of the things of God is the natural state of mankind in our lust and in our uh, darkness. But we have a, a, a way to minimize that uh, area of our lives that's given over 
to darkness and to ignorance. 1 Peter chapter 2, and again starting with verse 13. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the nourishment or punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. How many opinions of men have changed? I read somewhere that in 1857, I believe that was the year that they came out with a long list of scientific facts. Did you see the quotation marks around that? That proved the Bible was wrong. Sixty some odd facts that proved the Bible was wrong. One hundred years later, not a single scientist breathing at that time believed any of those sixty facts. It's kind of like the fellow that went to college and he first test he took, he kind of remembered the, the questions and he came at the end of his four-year stint and, and uh, the professors uh, handed out the quiz and he looked at it and it was the same quiz he had taken when he entered. And he brought that to the professor's attention. He said, the professor said, oh yeah, we know that. We know, we know. We're, we're well aware of that. It's the same questions, but all the answers have changed. One time I had a medical doctor who was a, a member of the church in Bartlesville. And he told me that the half-life, you understand what a half-life is? With radiation, it means that in a certain length of time, half of the radioactivity has disappeared. And in that length of time, half of what's left will disappear. And then uh, that same length of time, half of what's left until it, it eventually goes away and turns to lead. But the half-life, not of a radioactive material, but the half-life of medical knowledge was three years. So that what they knew for fact three years ago, half of it's not so now, at least in their thinking. Not that, that truth or fact has changed. It's just that, that there are a lot of folks who maybe even well-educated or ignorant and can make bad judgments. But if we will live like God wants us to, we'll take away a lot of their ignorant criticism. You say, well, well people wouldn't be that ignorant. They wouldn't, they wouldn't blame somebody for something that was completely beyond their control. Oh, uh, this, this one will hit, hit pretty close to home because in the Middle Ages, during the plague, there were Jewish enclaves in the cities. And in the Jewish enclaves, the plague did not hit like it did in the other parts of the cities. And so the idea that these folks came up with, the Jews are poisoning us. Let's kill them. What, were, what was the difference? The Gentiles were living like pigs. And the Jews were going by biblical laws of hygiene. So that the contagion that was so rampant among the Gentiles was not rampant over here, but they couldn't think it was their own fault. They, they just blamed it on somebody ignorant. They were ignorant. 
And they can call us troublemakers if they want to. But if we are submissive to those, if we are law-abiding, we take away some of that kind of ammunition. And we minimize the grounds that are given to the ignorant. And ignorance is in one area doesn't prove ignorance in another. Uh, Acts 4 and 13 Again, Paul and, or, or Peter and John are uh, before the, the council. Uh, they spent a lot of time there, didn't they? And he says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. They were unlearned and ignorant in the things that the members of the council were specialists at. But really, it was the men of the council who were the ignorant and unlearned about who Jesus was and about his power and about his will. And the tragedy of that was is that the ones who were really ignorant thought they were the ones that were learned. And they persecuted those whom God had blessed. Now, let's not be willingly ignorant. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 4. And saying, there are a lot of folks that, that say this, they've been saying this for centuries, for millennia. And they'll say, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this, they willingly are ignorant. That by the word of God, the heavens were of the old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. And, and this we know, um, I haven't got this written down, but... It, uh, God's not slack concerning his promises. He's just giving us time. It's not as some men count slackness, but, but he's giving us time to repent. But there are folks that say, well, there's not going to be a rapture. There's not going to be a millennium. The Jesus is not coming back. It, it hadn't happened yet. It's only going to happen once. You know, <clears throat> We didn't have an atomic war in the 50s and 60s. But if we had, it only happened once. Jesus is coming. His word tells us so. And all of the ammunition and all of the arguments that folks can bring up about it does not change the fact that God's not slack concerning his promise and he will do what he said he will do. Our own ideas are not always in line with God's ways. Have you ever noticed that? I, I seem to notice that on a regular basis. Romans 10, 2, For I bear them record that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness had not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. And that applies to lots and lots and lots of especially religious people today. They try to make up their own way to please God. They, they thought, well, God would surely like this. That's not what the book says. But it's their thinking, their idea. Oh, Lord, help me, help you, help us to find out what God said about a matter before we start trying to make decisions and set up programs and, and protocols and all of these things. Because his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. As the heavens are high above the earth, so are his thoughts above our thoughts and his ways above our ways. Amen. They being ignorant of God's righteousness go about to establish their own righteousness. <clears throat> Boy, I can mess up a good Bible study right here. It 
it's getting close to test time and the study group wants to study all weekend long and you say I'm going to church oh God won't mind if you miss a service when did they get authorization to speak for God but they go about to establish their own righteousness you can take this job it won't matter God won't care you know if I were scheduled to preach Sunday as of right now I'm not <laughs> And I decided God wouldn't care if I missed this. I've been real faithful. I've, I've got 152 services in a row. <laughs> Not counting the extras where I've taught lessons on, on uh, Tuesday or Thursday or whatever it was. I've, I think I'll just skip this one. He won't care, but you would. And whoever had to fill in for me would. We can go about to set up our own righteousness, figure out our own way, surely this will be all right. Now, I've used extreme examples, but how, how extreme are those examples when you compare with what a lot of folks use as their criteria for a way to please God? Well, why, how are we going to know what pleases God? Glad you asked that question. For one thing, we need to learn what he's told us. 1 Corinthians 10 and 1, and you'll notice that I've picked a lot of these because the word ignorant was in them. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. We need to learn what the Bible history is. What's already happened. And so that we can get an idea. He, he gave us an example right here. Don't be ignorant of the things that happened to Israel. When I was uh, still at the University of Texas, just shortly after I had been called to preach, I, uh, I was living in a, a rooming house, had lots of guys in there of all different types of, of religious persuasions. And, and we, we, well, I wore out a Bible the first year I had the Holy Ghost. And we were in one of those late night bull sessions talking about the Bible and doing this and that and the other. And, and, and I was generally the target. But uh, I, I mentioned to them, I said, well, you know about when Moses brought the children out of Israel and they went through the Red Sea. And I got some blank looks. Now, these were folks that went to church. And there were about three or four of them that went to the same denomination. I'll not say what it was. And there was, there was one of these guys that he was, he was absolutely clueless. And so I looked over at, at, at one of his uh, co-religionists, one of the fellows that went to the same denomination he did and, and he said oh I said don't worry about it we don't study that because it happened so long ago well do you study the New Testament where it says moreover brethren I would not that you should be ignorant how the fathers were under the cloud and passed through the sea that's what it was talking about was the deliverance from Egypt We've got to know some things. You not only need to know what it is, you need to know what it means. Romans eleven twenty five. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. We need to understand that because that there is a Gentile church, God has not rejected the Jews, that they will be restored. Blindness in part has happened to them, but remember, they're still God's chosen. He made a promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he doesn't break his promises. 
So don't get snooty and anti-Semitic and all of that kind of stuff because God still loves that people in a special way. We've got to understand what, what's going on. Not just what it is, not just facts, but what it means. We need to learn how it works. 1 Corinthians 12 and 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. For one thing, we need to know about spiritual gifts so that we'll know if they ever show up in our lives. And we'll know what God is doing and we'll recognize that it is God. We need to know how God works, not only with spiritual gifts, but with various leadings and, and, and what he wants to work, how he wants to work through us. We need to learn about God's promises in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. That's almost like that Romans 13, 1 and 13, isn't it? I wouldn't have you ignorant, brethren. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. I need to know what God's got for me. I need to know what he's promised me. How can I access his promises if I don't know what the promises are? How can I tap into his blessings if I don't even know the blessings are there. If I am ignorant of the ways that God works and I, I, I've got to admit and, and realize that, that my limited human understanding cannot take in all of everything about God but there's some of it I can catch. Some of it I can get and I need to, to know it and to tap into it. To not be destroyed when I lose a loved one and think it's over. No. No, I... For years and, and years when we sang, this world is not my home, we came to that verse that said, I have a loving mother up in glory land. I don't expect to stop until I shake her hand. I, I would sing, I have a loving Savior up in glory land. But my mama got, in the, got the Holy Ghost in a revival preached by brother, brother Larry Booker. And I drove out to West Texas, baptized her in Jesus' name. Now I can sing that song since she's passed away. Praise God. Praise God. I need to know his promises. I need to stand on his promises. But if I don't know them, I can't stand on them. We need to take our own ignorance into account. Hebrews 5 and 1, 1 and 2 tells us, For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, that he might offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, for that he himself is also compassed about with infirmity. Now I know that we don't have a high priest anymore except Jesus. But all of those priests in the Old Testament and the ministers in the New Testament are people. Acts chapter 10, the angel did not tell Cornelius how to be saved except to point him to a man. Angels don't do this. They're on a different level. I'm not exactly sure where that level is. I'm ignorant about those things. But when God chooses someone to minister to his people, notice, he chooses people. People who because they have areas of ignorance can make allowances 
for other people's ignorance. Brother Beardsley and I have both come in under situations where we didn't understand what you people have. We had all kinds of negatives, of mess ups, of, of errors in our background. Makes it a whole lot easier to put up with you. Because we've been there, done that. Maybe not the same thing, but the same principle. I didn't know. But it still did it. It was still done. But thank God, he chooses those that can understand and make allowances. And, and I had a minister friend. Who didn't he just he didn't get sick. He had never, to the best of his memory, had a day of sickness in his life. Strange character. And someone would call him to pray for them. And he'd go anoint them with oil, lay hands on them, pray for them, and he'd just step back. And since he didn't know what sickness was personally. He just stepped back and expect them to get up. Well, it didn't work like that. And I've been through that situation of being prayed for, and I didn't feel like dancing the jig right then. So I can understand. I've got the same problems, the same difficulties, the same situations. I fight the same things you do. That makes it where that... Sometimes our ignorance is overlap, and sometimes they're in different areas, but we can, had better, make a little allowance for each other. Praise God. And uh, <clears throat> one thing you, you need to do is when somebody's uh, not acting like they ought to, uh, you, did, you don't get in the fuss with them. Never argue with a fool in public. People might not be able to tell which one's which. There, there are two. Uh, let's see. No, that's, that's on down here. I'm going to try to get to it. Um, if a man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, this is from 1 Corinthians 14, 37. Let him acknowledge the things that I write unto you are the commandment of the Lord. But if any man be ignorant... Let him be ignorant. Uh, if somebody's just set, go on. Somebody else is interested in finding the word of the Lord. If they want, don't argue, don't argue with, with somebody who is just not going to hear it. The Lord will find him on some road to Damascus and he'll handle it. But uh, rather than you wasting or taking your time. Uh, we need to keep up with what's going on around us, 2 Corinthians 1 and 8. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. I know that there's so much happening and there's so much of the news that comes to us from all quarters that we can't keep up with everything. But it's, a, it's good to have an idea of, of, of what's going on. Uh, there are two verses in Proverbs, Proverbs 22 and 3 and Proverbs 27 and 12 that are exactly the same in the King James Version. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. But if you don't have an idea of what's going on around you, if you're ignorant of what's going on, you probably won't see the trouble that's coming and make proper preparations for it. I'm almost through and almost out of time. 2 Corinthians 2.10 To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgive it for your sakes, Forgave I it in the person of Christ. Lest Satan should get the advantage of us, 
for we are not ignorant of his devices, but sometimes, this is my addendum to it, but sometimes we are. Sometimes we don't realize what the devil's doing to us. Sometimes we don't realize the snare he's put before us. Sometimes we don't understand. And we need to be careful that we not be ignorant of the devil's devices. Some of those devices are hurry, worry, and frustration. Along with the unforgiveness that he has talked about here. Uh, the devil would like you to hurry up instead of wait on the Lord. Now I know there are times when it's, it's time to move. But there are a lot more times when it's time to find out, God, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to handle this? And I ask you the question, why pray when you can worry? But the thing is, worry never changed a thing. It didn't change tomorrow, it just messed up today. And then, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That's, that's what Simon Peter said. Don't be ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Well, Brother Moses, what does that mean? Just real simple. God's not bound by our calendar. He's not limited to our clocks. His agenda is not our agenda. And he'll do things right. I've got to trust him. It's ignorant not to trust him. It's ignorant not to obey him. Let's not be ignorant about ignorance. Praise the Lord. Could we stand? Let's worship the Lord this evening. Thank him for the knowledge that can be ours through Jesus Christ our Lord. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank God. Lord bless you and the children will be waiting. Thank the Lord. God bless you for coming this evening.